Welcome back to Power Lunch. If you attend a holiday party, you've likely seen many, many beer choices beyond the traditional Bud, Coors Light, Miller Light, the regulars. Uh, but after seeing a boom for many years, craft breweries are seeing sales maybe plateau just a little bit. And it's not just the craft brewers that are feeling the pressure. According to the Brewers Association, overall beer production fell this year, and it's the first time that's happened since the pandemic year of 2020. Despite that, at least 420 new breweries opened across the U.S., narrowly outstripping the 385 closings of breweries. Here on set to give us some insight into the challenges facing the craft beer industry is Matteo Rashaki. He is the CEO of Voodoo Brewing Company, which has 18 locations. That would be brew pubs, right, basically, right. Matteo, uh, in seven U.S. states. And you have two breweries that supply different kinds of craft beers to those uh, locations, That's right? Correct. You are, you've gone off uh, into, into franchising, which is a little unusual in this business. Usually they are owned by the brewer and the brewing company themselves. Here you've, you've gone the franchise route. Why? Um, there were a few you know, companies before us that were offering brewery franchises, but you had to build out a brewing facility. Um, this is one of the first of its kind where you can have the benefits of a brewing tap room without actually having to brew any of the product. What about the, the, the plateauing of beer sales generally and the, and the plateauing specifically of craft brews? Mm -hmm. Some years ago, the big guys, the Budweiser's, the Constellations, and so were going out and snapping up mm -hmm. craft, craft brews, or they were introducing their own versions of boutique beers. Yep. Now, not so much. What's happened in the marketplace? Well, you're still seeing a lot of this, what I call macro craft, which is being you know, produced by some of those larger brands. Um, and there's still lots of... Is there of, stuff as good as yours? I'll, I'll say it it's, uh, depends on the user. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, you know, I mean, there's still a, a lot of room out there for everybody to, to play and, and find some space. I mean, it's definitely getting more crowded and there's a lot more out there. But um, a lot of the uh, consumers are a lot more discerning now about, you know, well, who actually is making this product? You know, where is it being produced? Where is the dollar going? Um, and I think that's going to be a trend we're going to start to see as we uh, go into next year. So what do you see as your biggest competition? Is it other craft brewers? Is it cannabis? Because we're starting to hear that from an investor side of things as well. Is it something else? Um, we're still always going to be competing with each other in the craft beer sector for sure. I mean, we're still making up about a quarter of all uh, beer sales in the U.S., which is you know, really great for craft beer, and it's still you know, doing its thing. Um, but you're going to see different you know, beverage things hitting, uh, you know, the market as well. You're seeing a lot of uh, popularity with the, um, you know, young and up-and-coming drinkers that are looking at non-alcohol products and uh, different seltzers, RTDs, things like that. There was a time when I was an up-and-coming drinker. Uh, that's a long past <laughs> time, actually. Our, we're going to have a guest on who's going to follow you and who's going to say specifically that the rise of legalized cannabis has had a, an effect on the volume of, of, and sales of beer generally and craft beers particularly. You agree with that? I would agree with that. Really? They're even putting uh, cannabis and different ingredients into some of the um, you know, beverage products as well. So it's definitely going to take up uh, different shelf space and things like that. Has the market for craft beers gotten so, not oversaturated, but there, when I go into bars sometimes that feature lots of beers, there are almost too many of them for me to choose intelligently from. And sometimes the bartender can help me, sometimes the bartender can't. I, speak to that. You'll go into accounts and you'll see some, you know, 10, 12 lines. You'll see 50, sometimes 150 draft lines. It just depends. And at the end of the day, it, it really depends on, you know, the consumer coming in and what they're looking for. Um, there is something out there for everybody at this point. It's just going to be, you know, a matter of what's that retail establishment trying to achieve. Um, and the consumer is going to gravitate towards those types of places based on their offerings. And I realize you're in a very specific part of the market, but what are you seeing in terms of the health of the consumer and some of the patterns for buying and what they're gravitating towards, not only from a taste perspective, but also in terms of pricing and just general robustness uh, of appetite to purchase? I think convenience is a big piece of it right now. Being able to go to one place and, and do those things, if you can grab you know, your holiday shopping, your beer, you know, have a nice dinner, someplace you can take the entire family. Um, so like that's one of our um, kind of approaches to growth would be you know, putting those community establishments in place where it is kind of like a one-stop shop and you can do all of those things. 